Hey, this is Fable Paint, and I'll be telling you about the process on Black Shuck. Here you can see I'm sketching out a gravestone. I really want to get that background in there before I start anything else. The image at the top left is a thumbnail that I did as part of the brainstorming session, trying to figure out what kind of cryptids I wanted to draw, spooky things, you know. Uh, this gravestone is a Scottish Celtic cross. And I'm bringing in also a Scottish deer hound. Gotta have your references on hand so that you have a visual reminder of what you're aiming for. The Scottish deer hounds are one of my favorite breeds of dog. They're what I think of when I think of uh, the Grim or the Black Shuck or that, you know, the just uh, classic spooky black dog that you hear about in myths and legends that's supposed to haunt graveyards and churches and that kind of thing. I'm going over this creature, I'm just etching in its form. Get kind of a basic idea of what my lighting scheme is going to be. I really wanted to go for a kind of a, a black and teal and red thing. It was kind of one of my favorite color combinations is this. It just makes everything feel creepy. I've extended up the uh, the height of the gravestone just to give a little bit more balance to the scene so that everything's not starting about a third town. I've also grady I've also lasso gradiated uh, the area, firming up the lighting, deciding like how fuzzy I want the background to be. Here I'm in, uh, going in and etching in some details. Just again, just reinforcing that lighting, kind of giving him more of a feeling of texture too. So I really want this uh, this thing to not just look like a Sc Scottish Deerhound just standing there. I want it to look uh, creepy and kind of otherworldly. Something that's like definitely not supposed to be there. And because of that I've kind of uh, not defined the eyes quite as well as you would normally in a, a usual illustration of an animal. I really really want that haunted appearance and um, Part of the way that I'm achieving that is just trying to figure out how to keep things vague on the character because it's, it's so easy to go in and make everything sharp and distinct but I really want to have some sort of space in which your your brain can fill in the blanks with all the visual abstraction. You can see I've gone into the background with a sort of a, a hatch tool like this grid mark um, just because I like the very unnatural etching to it. I, I like that appearance. So I keep going over it. I just found it to be a very um, a fun tool to sort of paint with. Because it's not what you'd usually use uh, for any piece. Here I'm defining the ground a little bit more. Choosing like how to firm it up. Originally the black shock was just going to be sitting on the ground, but I, I wanted a kind of a more of a sense of elevation in the picture. Like the idea that it was looming over and you were like uh, walking past a, a part of the graveyard and here this beast just happened to be there and it's staring down on you. And you're like, oh no. <laughs> like it just emerged out of hell or something. Hence the red light. I'm also firming up some more details in the background there, trying to give it a little bit more interest so it doesn't feel just completely blank up at the top. I really like the simplicity of this composition. There's really two, there's only about like two or three major elements that are that defined. Mostly the dog, the foreground, and a bit of that gravestone in the back. And I didn't want to do too much in the background lest it distract from the dog. You can see I still try to add some interest up there, nonetheless. I'll go back and forth with my brushes a lot. I have a, a bad habit of using about 20 different brushes on any given piece. So I'm always making up my mind as I'm working. I'm also not too concerned about the brush strokes looking realistic. I really am just interested in the texture more than anything. I feel like a, a purely realistic rendering would take away from a little bit of the mysteriousness of the creature. And I like bringing it away from that like digital cleanliness. You know, 
I'm going in with some black mark and some light mark, just trying to, again, uh, bring in some texture into the piece. Now I'm coming to the end of the piece. I'm still trying to decide uh, how I'm going to wrap it up, and I decided to give it a few more strokes that broke the form a little bit. Because I want it to still want to have it not feel so well defined. Like the strokes aren't where you'd expect them to be. It's a little outside of the norm. And about here I start to get pretty satisfied with what I'm doing, adding in just a little bit more texture back in. But then, right about there, it's uh, it's basically done. Just a few details and picking at it here and there. But yeah, that's that's a uh, that's about it. You can see the finished piece here. I'm rather proud of how it came out. I, I always struggled with uh, how detailed I'm going to make a piece, but um, but yeah, you know, I I, I really enjoy uh, this legend, and uh, it was it was fun to sit down and just like take a break and and paint something for once. <laughs> um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed that very much. Thank you.